welcome to my channel and it's time for this year's mid-year freak out so it's june it's the middle of the year and it's time just to see what i've been doing reading wise so first is the best book you've read so far in 2017 and for this I'm going to go with Stranger Dreamer by Lani Taylor. So I'm going to choose this because it did end up being really good. It started off really really slow about until you got halfway and then it just suddenly picked up, it changed pace and you were hooked. And I did really really like this. This basically follows a young gentleman called Laszlo and he works in a library that helps the scholars and he is obsessed with this city called Weep that has suddenly been erased from everyone's memory so that's why they call it Weep, that's not the actual town's name and then luckily this envoy from Weep comes because they want to collect some scholars to help them with Weep's problem which I'm not going to go into because it is a really major spoiler and basically Laszlo goes, he enters Weep's and this is where everything just kind of changes and pace gets a lot faster. There is also another character in here, a main character, that again I'm not going to mention because she is a huge spoiler as well. So that's all I can really say without spoiling the whole book but it is really good. I would say if you do read it, stick with it because like I've said a few times it does get a lot better and I can't wait for the sequel. Carrying on with sequels, the next one is the best sequel of 2017 and that is A Court of Wings and Ruin by Sarah J Mass. This was always going to be the obvious one because this is just amazing, it was my most anticipated read of the year and well it was just amazing and I think it is the only sequel I've read so far. I think so far this year I've only read the first book or standalones. Basically, Caught Wings in Ruin follows straight on from a court of mist and fury. Fairy is trying to take down Tamlin's court, the spring court, in revenge for what happened to her sisters. I won't tell you because, of, because if you haven't read mist and fury, it will spoil it for you. And then basically after she's done that, because thankfully that's only like the first few chapters, it basically goes over to the night court and they're trying to stop the impending war. I did love this book, I laughed, I cried, it was so great to see the inner circle working together again because I just love those characters so much and yeah. Next is a new release you haven't read but you want to and for this I'm going to go with Red Sister by Mark Lawrence. So this is the arc I got in the Luminicrate box in February but the book did come out on the 6th of April so you can just go buy it in the stars. Basically all I know about this is that it seems to be about nuns and they teach assassins a bit like what I think is Nevernight, a bit like that. So I know it's something that I will like, it's just that it is a huge book. I think it's like 600, 700 pages. So that's what's worrying me. Sometimes I don't have good relationships with big books. So yeah, I will give it a go, but I think it's one that I'm going to have to really pick up when I am in the mood. But Assassins and Nuns, it looks like it might be pretty good. Next is the most anticipated release for the second half of the year and for this there's two that I'm thinking of right now and that's Ringer which is the sequel to Replica which is about clones and it's told from two different sides, Lyra and Gemma and I think Ringer is going to be the same and Replica ended on such a cliffhanger I just need to know what happens and then there is also God's Grave which is the sequel to Nevernight and I just cannot wait to read that. Jay Kristoff has just released the UK cover and it looks like it's going to be amazing. I've pre-ordered it on Waterstones so I can click to install on publication day and I just cannot wait. Next is on to the biggest disappointment and I've gone with The Boy in the Striped Pyjamas by John Boyne. I think everyone knows what this is about. It basically follows Bruno, a German boy and his family moved to Auschwitz and it's basically you know a German concentration camp. He meets a young boy who's a Jew and Certain events happen, lots of people have already seen the film and I thought this was a disappointment because I found Bruno so annoying, so naive. Even though he is only 10, he can't be that stupid and also it just wasn't as emotional as the film. I totally cried my eyes out at the film whereas this, it was just like, oh, okay. But yeah, big disappointment. So much that I would say just watch the film, don't bother with the book. Next is your biggest surprise and that's To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. This was a surprise for me because I read this back when I was in year 9 at school and I hated it but I thought I'd reread it again just to give it a go as I think I am going to reread loads of classics I read at school just because I am now older, I'm not being forced to read them and I think it might make it a bit more enjoyable. 
but this I ended up giving this five out of five stars and I loved it I was hooked basically because I think I'm older I kind of understand it a bit more and it is like quite relevant at the time with everything that's going on in, in America this basically follows a young girl called Jen Finch growing up in South America was it yeah the deep south of America in the 1930s obviously where race relations aren't good and her father Atticus Finch is a lawyer and he has been chosen to defend Tom Robinson who is a good person because he has allegedly raped a white person so obviously from all this it comes for all the racism at the time basically and it basically shows Atticus Finch trying to teach his young son and daughter about race relations and trying to make them follow the right path but I do really like this and I think this is a must read for everyone. I did write, do a little review, so I will link that down below for you. Next is your favourite new author, and I'm going with Stephanie Garber, whose debut novel Caraval came out this year. And I love this so much. This was basically sold to me as a UYA version of The Night Circus, but it is totally different. So Caraval basically follows two sisters and they get invites to this Caraval, which happens every year and it's kind of like a game. There'd be a certain game and the winner can win a wish or something like that. And in this game, Scarlet's sister gets kidnapped and the whole game is whoever finds her wins a wish. And all sort of stuff's happened. But yeah, it's hard to go into this without spoiling it. The reason why I loved it so much was all the imagery. Stephanie Garber really did it really well. You've got loads of imagery of roses and stuff like that. And she's so good and I do really want to get the sequel. Next is your newest fictional crush and I don't have any new crushes. It's hard for me to get a crush from a book. So for this I'm going to have to go with Reese, which was the same as last year because Reese is just amazing. I don't really have to say much, do I? Because Reese is Reese. If you've read the books you understand. If you haven't read the books you need to read them just to see what I'm meaning. But he's so lovely and he's so sassy and the way he treats Fairy as well and the other female members of his court, he's just amazing. Next one is the newest favourite character and for me that's Atticus Finch from To Kill a Mockingbird. Atticus Finch is just amazing. I love the way he treats his son and daughter. Jem's obviously a young girl so back in the 1930s she was meant to wear dresses and he's like no you can go out do what you want. Also the fact with how he's so, I don't know the word but I would say like modern with his thoughts and feelings. So like he's not like everyone else who are like super racist. He's there. He is defending this person of colour because he believes that he wouldn't be doing his job right if you just let him be found guilty because he isn't white. So he's there defending him, he's going through all the stick, he is getting abused from other people living on his street and he is just dealing with it. And Scout, who are just there and they don't understand and he's trying to teach them. You've got Scout who is punching people at school because they're calling her dad Atticus awful names that I'm not going to repeat here and he's like don't do that I know the same bad things about me but you want to be the bigger person and I just love him so so much. Next is a book that made you cry and I've mentioned this book twice already but I'm going to go with A Court of Wings and Ruin and I can't tell you why I cried because I'm going to spoil it for you. So again read it if you have read it and you want to talk to me about it comment down below but I did mention it in a spoilery review so if you want to know what I'm talking about I will link it down below but again don't watch it if you haven't read it because I don't want to spoil anything for you. Next is a book that made you happy and I'm going to go with The Princess Diaries by Carrie Fisher. So I read this in January just after Carrie Fisher died and reading this it was quite odd because she did reference her death in a few times which made you think oh god that's not good but it kind of made me happy because it kind of made me remember that she is such an awesome person and she's so funny and she's such a feminist as well which you see in this book so yeah it's just nice having something written by her and you can just reread it and you can be like yeah she was awesome but this is basically her kind of like a memoir i said that so weird then of filming the first Star Wars but it actually isn't, it's more about her affair with Harrison Ford which kind of annoyed me a bit but it's still awesome because Carrie Fisher wrote it. Next is your favourite book to film adaptation of the year 
And for me, I can't really answer because the only time I've been to the cinema this year was to see the second Guardians of the Galaxy film. But one adaptation that I am looking forward to is the BBC's adaptation of Cuckoo's Calling by Robert Galbraith or J.K. Rowling because I am so looking forward to it. They've got Tom Burke playing Cormoran Strike. I know Tom Burke from The Musketeers because he played Athos, my favourite musketeer. But other people might know him from Third Star, the one with Benedict Cumberbatch. She's just a little TV show, I think it was. Um, he is an amazing actor and the BBC do great adaptations. So I am hoping this will be amazing. Also, the BBC I do an adaptation of The Miniaturist by Jesse Burton. I cannot wait for that either. But The Cuckoo's Calling is based like a private detective, Cormoran Strike, and his assistant, Robin, and it just all follows from that. The Cuckoo's Calling, basically, a model has been murdered and they have to try and figure out who did it. So if you like a good murder mystery with lovable characters, I will go for this. Next is your favourite review that you've done for the year and for that I'm going to go with One Memory of Flora Bands by Emily Barr. I will link it down below. The reason why I've chosen this one, for some reason it's got quite a lot of views and it's my most popular video on my channel which I have no idea why. But the one memory of Flora Banks basically follows teenager Flora Banks who has memory loss so she can't remember things for a long time. Anything from after she was 10 years old she can't remember because she had a tumour that was removed and so that's caused some sort of memory loss. But it basically follows Flora Banks after she has kissed her best friend's ex-boyfriend and for some reason this memory stays in her head and it can't get out. So then she has to go travelling to try and find this boy because she believes that when she finds him her memory will all come back. She will never forget anything again. And it is quite good, it's fast paced and you just fall in love with Flora Banks because she's pretty amazing. Next is the most beautiful book you've bought this year and for that I'm going to go with The Flame in the Mist by Rene Adahe and I just love the colours with this. I would never have thought that orange and purple would go together but it just looks so pretty and I just love this so much. When I get actual bookcases I think this will be one of the books that I just plant face forward. But um, Flame in the Mist is basically a Mulan retelling I would say. It follows Mariko hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, and she's on her way to the Emperor because she's going to marry the Emperor's son, except her litter gets raided by people believed to be in the Black Clan. She goes to infiltrate this Black Clan because she wants to know who told them to kill her. So it basically falls from that, you meet her brother, you meet the members of the clan that are awesome, and I just love seeing strong female characters. And this ended on such a good cliffhanger, I want to know what happens next. Last one is what books do you need to read by the end of the year. So the first ones are basically all my books on my TBR. A lot of those are books that I got at Christmas and I still haven't read them because other books have been pushed to the front. And I also really want to read Our Dark Duet which I have here by V.E. Schwab. And I am just reading it now, I'm about 100 pages in and it's really good. Along with A Court of Wings and Ruin, this was my other most anticipated read of the year. So I can't wait to get it done. So yeah, that's my mid-year free cow. I think I've done pretty well. At the time of filming this, Our Dark Duet is my 30th book of the year and my aim is to read 60. So I think I am pretty bang on. I'm halfway there, halfway through the year. So hopefully I can read my goal of 60. And I will stop there because this video is looking very long. So as usual, you can like this video or subscribe to my channel. Also, there is my book depository giveaway that will finish at the end of June. So if you want to go into that, I will link it below as well. Also, you can follow me on Tumblr, Twitter, Goodreads, Instagram and Snapchat. So I will see you later with a new video. Bye!